taking your brand new crankshaft and drilling holes in it. I know. It's like, I keep telling myself, like, this is normal. This is normal. Yeah. This is normal. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to Project Camaro. If you guys haven't been watching, we are building my 2011 Camaro 2SS and Brett from Insane Power Hello. here in Las Vegas uh, is helping us build the motor. So that's kind of a background on the last 11 episodes. Today's episode 12, where we are going to be balancing our crankshaft. And Brett's gonna teach me how to do something like this because I have no idea how any of this works. I just know the words and how to say them. So today we're gonna take the crankshaft and we're gonna balance all the pieces make this crankshaft be perfectly smooth in this motor for Michelle when she's racing or street driving. <laughs> it's a street so, car. <laughs> so me, Michelle, and Axel down here are going to walk you through the steps on balancing our crank. Now, this is a very long process. We're not going to film every little thing for all you internet people. <laughs> so we're going to kind of give you a highlights of each section of it and move through it. And then we're going to balance the crank and show you how it's done. <laughs> and Axel is going to help a little bit so and to kind of recap uh what we've done so far you guys or what we have uh, we have our cali's crank uh crankshaft here right now and then we also have our cp pistons and our uh cp rods so yeah. if you want more information on that check the previous episodes out and we'll go into more detail ab about those components okay so we've already have our crankshaft sitting in our cwt balancer okay our next step is to create a bob weight which we will bolt it to the crank to simulate the weight of the counterweight Okay, so the first thing we need to do is start weighing pieces. So as you can see right here on the machine, we have a bob weight card. We're going to fill out this card, and that is going to give us our bob weight so we can put it onto the crankshaft. Okay, and we're going to have Michelle do that today. So we have our scale. Uh, it's all set up, ready to go. We're going to make sure it reads zero. We can hit zero. Just show you how accurate the scale is. <laughs> wow. Okay, so... It's a very accurate scale. Nice. Okay. Okay. So each section here is one that says rotating weight and one is reciprocating weight. So one goes around and one goes up and down. Okay. okay. Very simple. Yep. Okay. So remember we talked about that oil we guessed at? Yes. So we're going to automatically put that in here as five grams. Okay. Cool. Okay. So we enter that. Okay. So we have two rods on each throw. Okay. This being the throw of the crank. So the number one and number two rod is on the crankshaft here. So it's gonna multiply it by two, so our numbers. So we have, on our rotating side, we have our big weight end of the rod, our insert, that'll give us the total, times two, and give us a number, okay? On this side, we have our reciprocating weight. Small end of the rod, the piston, the pin, the locks, the rings, everything that goes up and down. Got it. Okay, that'll give us our total here. We're gonna multiply 50%. Now that number, different engine builders, different people will change that number. Industry standard on a V8 is 50%. We're gonna stick with that today. Okay. Works very well with an LS combination, cool. okay? So before people write in and say, why 50, not 52, 51, today we're gonna use 50 and say very basic, okay? Cool. We're not gonna reinvent the wheel today, Got it. okay? So let's start with the big end of the rod. Here's our Corilla rod, which is still a beautiful piece. I'm kind of a little bit weird and I always put the Tangs down. Okay. okay? Yep. So we put that on here. We're going to move this over and we're going to weigh the big end of the rod. So we want to make sure that one, we're straight. Okay. So kind of straight this way. Yep. And straight and come down a little tiny bit. Okay. What are, what are these called besides like, this is obviously a scale, but like, is this it's a called scale. something? It's just a setting fixture to weigh, to help weigh the, it's like a pendulum. Okay. okay? So that's going to hold up the small end of the rod. Yep. We're weighing the big end of the rod. So I'll recap here. Yeah, we're at zero, put the tangs down. I'm gonna put the, weight, the rod onto the scale, make sure it's straight, all centered, and I'm gonna tap it once. Make sure it always returns. The two little barbells, I call them, tells me it stopped. Okay. So we're gonna type that number into the big end right here. Okay, so we got 454.6, correct? Yep. We're gonna enter that. Okay, so see all these numbers that popped up? So our total right there, okay? Okay. We're gonna use a bearing insert. I know from your bearings, and I, I forgot to grab one, so I'll do that, is 45. Okay. Our king bearings. Our king bearings, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot it. <laughs> gotta plug it. Yeah, I gotta plug it. So <laughs> our rotating side is finished. Okay. We have 1,004.2 grams on our rotating side. Now we're gonna work the other side. So okay. our total weight right now 
is 642.7. Okay. Okay. So if we take that number and subtract it from that number, yeah. we will have our small end weight. Okay. Or we can do this. We can switch this around onto this side. Oh, I see. Okay. And bring this around over to here. Okay. And we're going to bring it back up. So basically, we're just switching ends. Yeah. So make sure that we're nice and straight, even on the scale. Let everything settle. Yeah. 188. We come over here, type in our number. One. So you could have just subtracted eight. those numbers. And it, right. Yeah, it so obviously okay. now, if I had my phone, if you subtract the 188 from the, add the 188, yep. excuse me, and the 454, we should have this total number. Got it. Of the rod. Okay. Okay. So you divide it. Okay. Yep. Not, not brain surgery, not anything great or anything like that. Okay. So now we have our rod weight. Now we're going to do a piston. Okay. Yes, we weighed all eight pistons. This happens to be the lightest one. There is only a one to two gram spread, but for time, we're going to weigh the slightest rod. Piston, excuse me. 412.3. Okay, and then the pin. Oh, 105.9. Okay, and our locks is right here. I laid all this stuff out, all this beautiful stuff from CP. Yes. The jewelry. The jewelry, yes. Yes. 2.7. Is that? Yeah. I see That's snoring. actual snoring in the background. Yes, it is, folks. <laughs> he's okay. a little bored. He's seen this before. Yeah, he's done this before. He could kill us. <laughs> so now when we do rings, we also have to do our expander rail. Okay? Here's our rail to control the piston. I already laid the pistons out, so we're going to grab our oil ring. Out of this bag from help. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so our oil rails, our second ring. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, you can't tell the difference between the top and the second ring, don't mix them up. Pretty simple though. That's a whole nother video. So we have 38.5. And so now our total weight on our reciprocating side is 1494.8 times 50%, that gives us 747.38. So there's our bob weight, 1751, and half bob weight of 875. All right, everybody, we have our bob weight and we have our half bob weight. Now, some people do them half at a time. I do them complete, uh, just what I'm used to. So we're gonna make our bob weight with all the nuts as it, we bolt it on the crank, we need it to weigh 1751.59. Got it. Okay. okay. You're never going to hit that number exactly. We're going to get really close. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take this off. These are the weights supplied to us by CWT and we're at 1646. Okay. So now we're going to grab some weights and we're going to make one weigh that. So we're at 1746. Okay. So whatever we put on one side, we need to put on the other side. Okay. Okay. And well, the camera's not rolling. I'm going to let Michelle make all of these. So see, we're too heavy right there. Oh, no, we're right no, we're there. All right, yeah. So now we got the two lighter ones. There you go. So yeah. that's 51 on the dog. Okay. If you want to get a little crazy, we can put a half one on it and stuff. Yeah. There's no reason. Okay. Remember, we still have our mystery five grams over here yeah. that we're assuming. Okay. So anything to the left of the dot, we want to make perfect. Cool. Anything to the right, you're getting a little crazy. Right? Okay. So what I always do first is I put it all back together, just like I'm going to put it on the crank. So you did, you did that pretty good. Like you, you might have done this once or twice. Twice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh shit. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, wait, yeah. hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Go back. I, kind of after 30 years of this, of playing with myself here with this thing, yeah, you get a handle for it. Yeah. The biggest thing you got to remember is don't let your cell phone ring and not tighten these up. Uh huh. Okay. Because later on, when this is spinning, you'll understand why. <laughs> so, I never assume I get it tight enough. So I always use my little trusty pliers and I give it a little. Yep. And I. Okay. So <laughs> we'll go back on the scale with 51 on the dot. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna do this three more times, and then we'll put them onto the crank. Okay? Awesome. Cool.
I've always done this the same way. I always put it on 90 degrees from the throw. Okay? Okay. The biggest thing you have to be careful about is not to scratch the crankshaft. Okay? So you don't want to be stabbing it all over the place. You know what I mean? Yep. Well, I don't, but yeah. I could I you make sense of it. You don't want to damage where the barren rods, okay? Got it. So I know that that's bad. That's bad. Okay? I've done that before. Yes. <laughs> we all have done that. So, so as we just put it like this, I always put it the same. I put it in the middle of the throw. You could put it all the way to the right. You could put it all the way to the left. I like the middle. I like it 90 degrees. Cool. Why? I have no idea. Okay? <laughs> just in my weird brain, that is where I think it should be. Got okay? it. So I tighten these up so it doesn't fly off and kill me. So we'll go down the row here. You have to come see Axel's putting social distance between yeah, Brett yeah, and I now yeah. that I've said that yeah. we're, we're too close to each other. Yeah. This is what you don't see when we're in when the room with the table. Axel's like totally just wants to be part of the show. So yeah. there you go. Here's his moment. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, stop standing so close. Cor yeah. Coronavirus. Coronavirus right here. <laughs> Coronavirus watchdog. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Yep. So are, th are these made of aluminum or what are aluminum, yeah, yeah. Okay. So hopefully if they do hit the wrong way or anything, it dents the aluminum before it dents the crank or scars it or scratches it. Okay? Got it. All right, so we're going to spin this up. Oh my God, that's sketchy. That's sketchy. Yeah, that's yeah. really so scary. That's why I said you had to make sure those are tight. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I would not be standing here if I didn't know those were tight. Yeah. So it's going to come up to RPM and it's analyzing the out of balance now. So as it spins, there is little bit stations uh, in here that are monitoring it and analyzing the out of balance. So at 493 now, it has turned green, so it's at RPM range. Yep. And now we're at 34.7 and 63.56 out of balance. That's quite a bit, isn't it? Quite a bit. Yeah. So first thing you gotta do is work on the side that's the heaviest. Okay. okay, wait, so, so, is this, so eventually these will match these two dials, right, or no? No, no, we want to be opposite. Opposite, okay, yeah, okay, okay, gotcha. So, right now, as I move this around, it tells me the angles, okay? Yep, okay. So at zero is where it wants you to remove weight or add weight. Okay. We are on remove right here. Yep. If I put this here, it would want me to add weight right here because remember our object is to make our piston and rod weigh the same as the counterweight okay we don't want to add weight because we want to remove it right okay got okay. it so we're going to bring it back around so our left stanchion and right stanchion our right happens to be heavier 63.56 versus 34.77 okay we're going to bring it up to zero and that is our location the center of these v blocks is zero okay so right here it wants me to remove weight Got it. Now, we can do this several ways. We could drill it, we can grind it. A NASCAR motor or something like that, they would not drill. Okay. Because what do you get when you have a big swinging piece of metal with a hole in it in a bath of oil? You have an oil pump. Yes. We don't want that, we'll have too much drag. Okay. okay? In a streetcar application or a lower RPM engine, a hole is not a big deal. Even okay. a factory drills a hole. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna drill a hole right at this location. So I'm going to put this so it's in the center of the crank. I'll give it a little tap over. We're going to spin this up a little bit. Okay, we're going to drill a hole. Taking your brand new crankshaft and drilling holes in it. I know. It's like, I keep telling myself, like, this is normal. This, this is normal. normal. Yeah. This is normal. Right, move this out of our way. And we're going to spin this back up now. Okay. Okay. We're going to analyze our out of balance again. Bring back up to RPM. Okay, so now we're down to 51. Okay, right side is still heavier than the left side, so we're going to keep working on our right side. Okay. We're going to bring it back to zero. See where we're at? Mm -hmm. It's still in the same location. So we're going to drill it a little bit deeper. Okay? Same hole. Same hole. We want to make the least amount of holes as possible, okay? Okay, so we're at 45 again. Okay, so the hole is literally, the deeper we go down, yep. okay, 
the less impact it had on oh, weight. I see? see. Yeah. So the higher out yep. and the farther out, the more impact it has. Okay. So since that is, we're going to move over one little bit. Now we could take a bigger hole here, or we can make another small hole next to it. I'm going to make another little small hole right next to it. We're having problems with my mic. It was my mic, and she sabotaged me. No, I generously gave you mine. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's, that's the way I'm really going to sit. Yeah. What he says is more important than what I say. That's, that's the bottom Actually, what I do is more important. What I say, no one cares. <laughs> OK. I'm going to shut this off. I'm just going to reach behind you. We're going to get up. We don't want any of the chips to scratch our crank. We'll spin it back up. Yeah. Now when all this is all done, we'll have to polish the crank, we'll clean the crank, so it's not a... Uh, Do it and go type yeah, of deal. Yeah, yeah. Super happy about this, <laughs> all of this. Yeah, she's like, great. <laughs> like, are we done yet? Yeah. How many holes are we going to put in my brand new piece? Yeah. <laughs> As you can see from your brother's boat motor, yeah, yeah people can butch this up. That's insane. Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Our machine is telling us we are balanced to tolerance. So in my little madness, the weights now are exactly 180 from each other, so they're posing. Yep. If we hit this force button, it would force the two together, okay? And this 3.6 would cancel out this 3.2. So it tells me that it is balanced to tolerance, that it's less than half of a gram. Got it. Because that's what we said as a thing. Yeah. I don't stop there. Okay? okay. This would be done for your average shop is good enough. I'm going to keep working it till I get these numbers less than a gram. Okay. And everybody's like, oh, Brett, you said earlier that five grams was oil we were guessing. True. I just feel that when I get it better, I do a better quality job. Barren life looks better. It's just something I'm anal about. Okay. okay? So I'm going to grind on this a little bit more. I'm going to get it below a gram and get it perfect for you. So cool. that, that's what we're at right now. OK, awesome. I'm going to do a little bit more grinding here. OK. And we'll keep going. Sounds good. Easy for me. Yeah. Just hang out. A little bit more grinding. Our crank does not look like a beaver has killed it. We have small holes. We'll do a little deburring after. Nothing crazy, just to burn the hole so it's not a sharp edge. But we were down at 0 0.09 and 0 0.02. So I would say this crank is pretty much near perfect. Awesome. So it is ready now to be washed, final cleaned, and mic'd up for setting bearing clearances. And we'll do that next. Awesome. So, perfect. I learned a ton. Uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, basically what Brett did, I got to do the little weight thing over there. That was cool. But <laughs> beyond that, I was a spectator. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions for Brett about uh, balancing crank, or if you want to get yours done here at Insane Power, be sure to give them a call. And so next up is episode 13. Yep, and we will start on the assembly process now. All the machine work is done. We're going to start fitting bearings and rings, and we'll be a start putting this together. All right, so tune in next week. Every Monday we do videos, so be sure to come check them out. Thank you guys for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe. See you all soon. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you need a direct link, just click up here to subscribe to my channel. If you want to see the last episode of Project Gourmet, just give it a click right over here. And if you're looking for some awesome content just from Gourmet Racing, you can give it a click right down here. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.